This reference photo was actually right outside of the little cute B&B that I stayed in, and this was the little scene that greeted me outside of my door. Of course, Albuquerque is known for its adobe buildings with all of the wonderful turquoise accents everywhere. I knew immediately when I saw this beautiful little scene with the doorway and the posts and kind of how the light was hitting those areas with the shadows and the the vines, I knew I wanted to paint this painting. I'm sketching in my largest shapes and just the general outline of the building and the, the vines, the bushy shapes that they are, but of course with the more linear lines of the building. This is a more square image. Of course, I'm making it, a, a, I'm not necessarily painting it as a square. This is a nine by 12 piece of Wallace paper. And so I am gonna cut off a little bit off the bottom of this reference photo. What I like to do with my building paintings paintings or any type of man-made structure in the landscape is I really love to nestle them into the foliage and the greenery and nature around them. And so of course this reference photo was exactly that, this little doorway that is that is very sheltered by these vines. That's exactly what I love to paint because my job becomes easier. I don't have to be so careful to make sure all of the lines are very straight and lined up. Of course I do, I am careful about that kind of stuff, but the way that those man-made structures weave in and out of our land and out of, out of in front of and behind of foliage really helps convey a softer effect to the, to the buildings instead of being such a harsh blocky outline against the sky or against trees or whatever. It helps with that kind of mystery and that really cool painterly impressionistic quality that we all love. This is actually a piece of rare Wallace paper that they no longer make, but this texture is very similar. It is a standard paper. It's very similar to Pastel Premier to me and my and my um, experience of working with sanded papers. I am going to be using some watercolor on it here in a minute and just kind of testing to see what how the paper will handle the watercolor. It does buckle it a little bit but it's not anything that I can't handle. Right now you see that I have just put in the major dark doorway, the shadows of the bushes, where the darkest parts are. And now what I'm doing is I'm using my fan brush and I'm going to start putting in some brighter, lighter values and colors into where the bushes will be um, and all around. This is kind of a fun experimental way to play using different types of underpainting medium. So I used the alcohol and hard pastel, and now I'm using just regular watercolors in different colors, mostly bright blues, bright greens, oranges, very bright yellows. The watercolors I have are actually almost more of a gouache because they can be pretty opaque. You'll see that effect in a minute because I really wanted to add those bright highlights of color already present in my my underpainting where the, that bright light is hitting that far left bush. I'm really sticking with an analogous palette here. Colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. There is a little bit of orange there which of course is analogous to blue, but mostly I'm using greens, very, very warm yellows to form the base of these, uh, the, just the vines that are around this little hidden doorway. I love that really bright, very warm yellow. And of course, now the pieces dry, the magic of video, and I'm beginning with the layers of dry pastel, really trying to focus right now on developing a little bit of color variation and broken color in the shadow areas of this adobe. Working with pastel is so much about layering and having a plan to know where you are headed. There is a definite messy stage to early stage pastel paintings and part of learning your your in your art practice is confidence that you can fix issues that occur during the painting process. 
Of course, I watch a lot of these videos that I, I record of myself, and a lot of times I think, oh, Bethany, stop, you, you had the painting right there, why did you keep going? Isn't that just the case? Sometimes we keep going when we should have stopped or we put down a mark that just isn't quite right. That's why I really encourage you to step back away from your pieces uh, during your, your easel time. That way you can see some issues, take pictures of your paintings during the process, and that way you can see them as a thumbnail, which oftentimes will reveal composition and value errors. I loved working on these marks of turquoise door. Of course, this is the shadow color of the turquoise. Then I'll also be moving to a much lighter turquoise. The lighter value really helps tell the story of that light streaming down. I'm working a little bit here to develop some shadow color at the base and then of course that gorgeous light turquoise really helps start to tell the story of that light streaming across. I want you to pay particular attention to the varied color temperature of the greens that I'm using in the vines around this little doorway. Whenever you really want to depict a lot of light coming across, changing between cool and warm, warm colors will really, really help you define and exaggerate that feeling of light. So layering together different color temperatures of green will help you if you struggle a little bit with all of the greens in the landscape. I added quite a bit of dark color and some purples into the interior of the door frame. And now I'm using a black Carbothello pencil to help get a little bit of fun texture on the door and all around that right hand side vine. I love those scribbledy marks, really, really changing up my mark making using wide scumbles, using pencils, thinking about my pastels and the tools that I have, which include pencils, of course, as the brushes themselves. Some are thicker and some are thinner, and all of them combined together make for a really interesting piece. In addition to working on my different mark making, I also really like to play with edges, having some harder edges. The hardest edges in this piece are probably the doorway and that very light colored turquoise. But then I really want soft edges in the shrubbery and the vines around the door. Those really are detail pieces, but not the most interesting part of the painting. I want the eye to focus in and using harder edges and softer edges as a combination will help you guide your viewer into your focal point area. I'm working smaller and smaller in my details right now, starting to really finalize some of the very brightest spots and some of the darkest spots. That little tiny area of that in the doorway is glowing, adding in some gentle color shifts, really taking a step back to assess the piece as a whole. Pulling out that really bright, nice, warm yellow, putting those details in next to the doorway. Notice I don't put a lot of those details at the edges of the piece. I don't need or want the eye to wander out by adding ex extra detail to that edge. The takeaways from this painting demonstration are make sure you really have fun, develop your map early on with your underpainting. 
Make sure you step away from your painting every now and then so you can see issues that might need fixing. Think of your pastels as brushes themselves, choosing to make wide scumbling marks and pointed marks and scribbling marks that will really help you develop interest. Make sure you're adding detail inwards into your focal point area. Try not to put too much on the outward edges of your piece. In addition to all of these, look at your edge work. Make sure that you have hard and soft edges within the painting. The most important takeaway is to have fun with your paintings. Have joy, paint what you love, and the love will shine through. Thank you so much for watching. Just a few minutes left, final little details, and the finished piece. I hope you enjoyed watching that pastel come to life. It was so much fun to paint. It's always fun to teach you new techniques and I hope you learned something. If you did, please give this video a like. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and hit that little notification bell so you can know when a new video comes available. If you'd also like to help support this content coming out, every little bit helps. I would love it if you would consider visiting my Patreon page. The link is right here. Thank you so much for considering it. Thank you for spending your time with me today and I will see you around.